name is Arun Gupta and I work for Couchbase. Today I'll talk about how can you easily get started with Docker tooling in Eclipse. Okay, so this is eclipse.org main website. You click on the download button here. Um, this is Eclipse Mars R2. Uh, that's the release that is the latest release at this point of time. I'm on a Mac, 64 bit, it's automatically chosen for me. I click on Eclipse IDE for Java EE developers. Uh, this gives me a gzip file and I download that and I have already ungzipped it. So I have my Eclipse ready to go and let's see how we can install Docker tooling in it now. So this is how my Eclipse looks like. So if I go here, Eclipse, about Eclipse, you can see this is Eclipse Java EE IDE for web developers, Mars 2 release, okay? And it's pretty recent as well. So. Let's go to our workbench first of all. Um, so I'm going to go to help and I'll go install new software. I'm going to select a Mars update site. It takes a few seconds to update what all software is available there. Once it's done, you want to search on Docker pick Docker tooling, uh, check the version number. This is the version number as of today. So I'm gonna click on next here. Notice the finish button is not enabled yet and we'll see that in a second. But uh, you can see Docker tooling, version, what is the IDE, etc. Now I need to accept the license agreement at which point my finish button is now ready. Okay, if I click on it and it installs the plugin. And I need to fire up my Eclipse. So I'm going to restart my Eclipse here. So Eclipse will start up in a second. And there you go. So my Eclipse is now ready. Let's take a look at it. I know it has the Docker tooling plugin installed. So let's take a look at it, how we can use that Docker tooling plugin. So the first thing we're gonna do here is uh, go to window, go to perspective, open perspective, other, and we're gonna select the Docker tooling perspective. All right, so this is a Docker tooling perspective. It shows a Docker Explorer here, Docker images, containers, console, properties, etc. That shows up over here. So we need to connect to a Docker daemon. And now this is running on a Mac. So on a Mac, the way you get a Docker daemon running is by using Docker machine. So uh, let's uh, go to a terminal here. And uh, here is my Docker machine running. This is happens to be the machine name, Couchbase, but could be whatever. This is the active machine in this shell. It's running as a virtual box image. This is the URL that we care about. So I'm gonna take this URL here. I'm back in my Eclipse here. I'm gonna say, let's set up a connection for Docker Daemon. Um, let's give it a name first. I am gonna call it as Docker Machine. I don't want a Unix socket. That would be on a Unix box, but since I'm running on a Docker Machine, that would be my TCP connection uh, with using a URI. So I drop the URI here. And we also need to enable authentication. Let's click to the directory where we can actually drop all the contents. So dot docker machine machines and that's my machine name. Okay, so that's the directory name we need to pick here. And let's test the connection. All right, so connection succeeded, that's cool. Click on finish. All right, there you go. As soon as I connection is set up, it gives a name, it gives the URL, and my Docker images are populated. Um, it shows my images, ID, repo tags, created, virtual size. It can see the containers. There's apparently one container that was exited a few minutes ago, um, and it shows the image name here as well. So let's expand this guy here a little bit. Uh, I can look at the list of containers here and again list of images here. Um, 
well, this container is there, but this was exited. So how do I customize that? So you click here, you click on customize view. You can apply the filters. Uh, whatever you say in this, those will be items will be hidden. So I can say, don't show me stop containers. So if I click on OK, and my stop containers are now hidden from both the views. OK, so it's not there. Let's go back here, click on customize view, disable it. So now stop containers will be visible. OK, so that's that's a very simple and easy thing to understand. Um, so now um, if I look at Docker images here, um, I need to select a particular host. That's when the images are visible over here. So the first thing that I may want to do is, um, I see there are a bunch of images already here. Let's pick this Arun Gupta slash Couchbase image, which is a pre-configured image for the Couchbase server. Um, and it not only has the Couchbase server baked in, but it also has some REST APIs, which allows you to easily configure the server. And that's all baked into the image itself. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click here and I'm gonna say run. Okay, it says that's the image name. Um, I don't care about the container name at this point of time. Um, I don't wanna use the random ports. This is equivalent to dash P option when you're running the Docker container. So I'm gonna disable that because I want it to be specifically mapped to that exact port. Okay, so that's cool. Um, all right, I can click on finish, but let's take a look at next. But before that, you can see your standard options are available. If you want it to be an interactive or open a console, click on next. You can uh, start attaching your data volumes here if you want to. Um, uh, that's a new concept that is introduced in Docker recently. You can set up your environment variables, resource limitations, and how much do you want for the Docker container to consume, okay? But let's click on finish for simplicity. So once I click on finish, uh, again, this funny name is assigned to our container, but the difference between these two containers here you see is, uh, it says helpful Wozniak, it doesn't have the green arrow and here it is a green arrow. That means this is, the container is running, okay? So that's kind of cool. Uh, and then I can right click on this container and I can say display log, which it is already showing here. So you can see the container log very easily. Now this is the REST API I was talking about which allows my container to be pre-configured, okay? So that's kind of cool. Now, container is up and running. What do I do with this now? Well, um, you wanna view the admin console for Couchbase. That's the easiest way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to window, show view, and I'm gonna say, show me the internal browser. And my browser comes up here. Let's bring the browser a little bit bigger. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna say 192, 168, 99, That's the default IP address if you're using Docker Toolbox or if that's the first machine that you've created. And I'm gonna use port 890, 8091. This is the port that we exposed when we ran the container. So let's click it here. And my Couchbase admin console comes up. And now let's enter my super secure username and password. Okay, there you go. Voila. So our container is up and within Eclipse itself, I can see the Couchbase console. So that is pretty cool. Uh, let's see more stuff what we can do here. Uh, once again, if I go back here, I can customize the view. I can say, don't show me the stopped containers and only the running containers are visible now. Um, so I can, well, let's, clean, let's get rid of this browser first. So now here, I can say, show me the properties of this running container. So it can give me more details, you know, what the container look like. I can expand the ports, it shows me the port mapping. So that's pretty neat. I can inspect the containers, which is basically the JSON fragment that you get when you do Docker inspect. So that is pretty cool as well. You can get you know, a very nice visual representation. So if I make the window bigger here, you can see the complete Docker inspect command that's visible right here. Okay, that's kind of neat. Now, if I go to Docker containers here, again, you can see the set of containers here. This one is exited. This is up for about two minutes. Um, I can go here and I can say, don't show me all the containers, show me only the running containers, which is equivalent to saying Docker PS as opposed to Docker PS dash A. So that's sort of the analogy over here. Um, and here, of course, uh, I only have one container running, but let's say if I run the Wildfly container here, okay? So I'm gonna right click here and I'm gonna say run and I'm gonna say run this and publish this on 8080 and I'm gonna click on finish. 
So now it fires up the Wildfly container for me. So now I have two containers running over here. So now let's say if I wanna search on Couchbase, it can show me only that container. So if you have a bunch of containers running, it's very easy for you to take a look at it and see what can be done with this, okay? That's kind of cool. All right, um, let's see what else we can do with this. Um, how we can pull an image now, okay? So I'm gonna right click here and I'm gonna say pull and I can type um, any image name here. So let's say I type Nginx. Um, if uh, nothing is specified, it gives you a uh, warning that here you're using latest. So I'm gonna click on finish and it starts pulling the image for me. So hopefully it should show up soon here. And over here you can see pulling Nginx latest image um, and the image should show up soon here. Um, so that's kind of cool. Now what you may wanna do is also um, try to, well, oh, here you go. So the image is now available and I can run it essentially. Um, so the next thing I wanna show here is how easy it is to build an image as well. So let's go to the Docker images here and I can click on this build icon and now it'll say, hey, you wanna build an image? Yeah, sure, I wanna build an image. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna build a simple test image, okay? And it asks for a directory. Now, uh, the weird thing is it does expect the directory to be pre-created. Now, ideally, I would have loved if it, the directory is existing for me. So this is from a previous run. So let me go back here and delete this file here. Okay, so that's gone. So let's pick this directory here. And I can now I can say edit Docker file. So all I'm gonna do is from Rune Gupta slash Couchbase. Um, and here I can do my entire syntax, whatever I wanna add, you know, whatever commands, whatever env variable, whatever yum install, apt gets I wanna do, I can do that here. For simplicity, this is not a Docker file tutorial. So I'm just gonna keep from Arun Gupta slash Couchbase. And if I save it, I'm creating a new image Couchbase test. This is where my Docker file is gonna be saved. So let's click on finish, okay? So here goes my image. Um, now, if I go here, I can say from Docker file, and that thing is saved here, okay? Um, so now um, Couchbase test image is there and the tag is there and I can run it, okay? So I think uh, this short video kind of explained a whole bunch of features around Docker tooling in Eclipse. I wanna leave you with some last pointers. Uh, if you look at this um, uh, wiki.eclipse.org, all the details about Linux tools project and Docker tooling, etc., are available here. So it talks about pull image, you can even push an image, run an image, build an image, add a tag, containers overview, and all the fun things, okay? So hope you had a good time, and give it a shot. Thanks.